Well, that was the scene early this morning at Dawn Patrol as the owners, the collectors, made their way onto the front lawn here at the Vanderbilt Cottage in Newport, Rhode Island. The Breakers, welcome to the inaugural Audrain Newport Concours d'Elegance. And as you can see, all the beautiful cars are lined up according to their category, their class, their genre, and the fans are making their way in because this is a very special event. Now, Newport, history, luxury, and sport. History, definitely since the turn of the last century, it has been a place where many firsts have happened. And of course, with luxury, well, that was a given for a lot of the lucky people that lived here. And sport, tennis, golf, polo, motor racing. But today, I'm joined by Jay Leno, really, Tommy Kendall. Really, only one of those is interesting. And which, yeah. one of you, which one of those do you resemble the most, one, you Jay? Know, I, I got in a knife fight with a guy out of 65 uh, Borg Ward, Isabella, and he stabbed me in the lip. Here, so I'm, I'm bleeding a little bit. <laughs> playing uh, hurt, though. We yeah, appreciate you playing hurt. Very competitive comp <laughs> class, the Borg Ward, Isabella. Uh, um, no, it, it's great fun. I mean, it's just the right number of cars, you know. A hundred cars, you can... Sometimes you go to these concourses and there's literally... 1,500 cars, and it gets a little overwhelming. This, there's space between the vehicles. You can walk around, talk to the owner, look at each car. It's very nice. It's really terrific. Well, one of the things we, Tommy and I both uh, come from the world of racing, and I woke up this morning with that familiar feeling in my tummy, like, you know, something's happening today. It's a, there's a sort of climax of competition that happens, uh, and it really is. We've got to, sorry. Now, is this suit from the world of racing? I, I, it looks like from, you know, from the world of- Dog uh, racing. Of, of the world of huckstery. <laughs> <laughs> yes, step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Please here. buy him. Buy a bottle of Dr. Good right here. <laughs> well, that's a fantastic suit. Well, I got you on stage, didn't I, Jay? There you are. Yes, I, yes. I, I love that yeah. suit. As you see, all my money went into the vehicle. Yeah, see, I, I did not that. spend a dime on clothing, as you can see. But you, you could get... He has a suit collection, not a car collection. I oh, do sure. have a suit collection, not a car collection. That is, yeah, yeah. But race day, in our world, Tommy and I both used to Sunday mornings is when the adrenaline gets going. Right, because right. Preparation, and you see behind us, I mean, the trophy, if, I'm sure a lot of people standing here in the crowd have not seen it. Don't try and pick it up with one hand. No, It'll no, be the last nice. thing you'll It'll do. be worn around the neck, too, with a, <laughs> with a chain. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, an extraordinary trophy and solid sterling silver. It's absolutely beautiful the way they've been, it's been sculpted here. Rick Shad did the original design. Uh, this is definitely a one-of-a-kind trophy. But in the end, the kind of people that are here, you said it yesterday, people that can... Uh, enter their cars into the spirit of a competition like this, they don't need trophies to feel good about themselves. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, oh <laughs> having been a judge, yes, they do. Oh, and you know, they get very mad when they don't get the trophy. They stab you. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that guy that stabbed me, yeah. But yeah, you've entered Pebble Beach. You've won Pebble Beach. I, I've won, not best of the best of uh, show. But won my class a couple of times. So too, tell me right? what that's like, getting ready for that moment. I mean, it well, was... it's great fun. Actually, you know, once we did a show on the angry losers of Pebble Beach. <laughs> okay. And we pulled the judge aside, said, don't give us any names, don't tell us the cars, just tell us the worst loser. Oh, my God. One guy was so mad he went back to his room, urinated on the bed <laughs> all over the wall. They threw him out. Another guy took his second place trophy, put it under the wheel of his car, ran over it on the ramp. I mean, hilarious, yes. hilarious. You know, when billionaires lose, they get very angry. Yeah. It's a little bit like the competition with these ma these mansions. So the people that bring these cars, they're all oh, titans. Yeah. They're all, you know, masters of their own domains. And there's only one winner. I, I, I've only shown a car once. Well, you once. know what happens? A lot of times you get guys that are not, maybe not, I mean, obviously you have a lot of real hardcore car guys. But you have those guys that, oh, I'd like to do that. So they're a bit like the English. They take the kid he's born, they send him to boarding school, shows up when he's 18, and your name is, oh, you're my son, you know. That, that's what they do. They, they sort of they buy a car, they send it to the store, so this car is going to win Pebble. It will, yeah. Okay, it's going to be another $800,000 to finish mm -hmm. it. All right, but it's going to win. It will win. And of course, when it doesn't win, oh, my God. But you can't send the car, child no. back or the car. My, I'll tell you my favorite story. I saw a guy, I was, I was reading the judging. This guy had an Auburn. And... The judges go through, headlights, da, 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 da. the judge, oh, the clock doesn't work. The star goes, uh, no, it was working before. Well, it's not working now. And well, let me call my guys. He calls his restorer that can't get him, he get an answer. So the judge goes, look, we're gonna go down the row of cars. When we come back, if it's not, still not working, we're gonna deduct. We won't deduct now, we'll give you a half hour. Okay, this guy's frantically looking for the restorer. Yeah. So finally the judges come back, the store hasn't come back up. We deduct the points. Just, move on. Just then, the restorer's got a sandwich in his hand and a Coke. 
He comes over and the guy starts, the clock doesn't work, you idiot. Da, 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 we lost the class. Da, da. And the restorer said, did you wind it? He goes, no, it's electric, isn't it? He goes, no, you got to wind it. <laughs> yeah. He, all what you expect for All you had to do was turn the bezel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful yeah. story. Oh, my favorite. I love it. So as you're sitting here today, you've been involved with Nick Shorsh building up this event. Uh, you go to these events all around the world. It's really been a, a, a smorgasbord of, of, of sensory overload all, all week. Right, yeah. what, what has been your, your highlight so far? Well, obviously doing this show it yeah. is, has to be the highlight. Um, no, you know, the high, you know, the nice thing about this is it's such a beautiful area. If you come with someone who is not a car person, as most men and women do, sometimes the woman is a car guy, sometimes blah, 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 blah. there's other things to do. You know, yeah. my wife and I took a tour of some of the mansions and the art collection and the, there's an illustration museum, you know, before photography, you had to illustrate for magazines. And they have all these illustrations. It's my the favorite Atom. place in town. Oh, yeah, it, it's really fantastic. So that's a great thing. And there's great restaurants and great shopping. So it's a lot of fun. You can have, because most of the time, I'm in a Walmart parking lot on a Sunday morning, and it's 300 cars. It's 900 degrees. Pretty special for your wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, whereas this, I mean, it's just such beautiful surroundings. There's something for people to do besides cars all the time. Let's talk about your own, uh, well, not your own class, but a class that you're responsible for. You're very aware, I know, of how we get younger generation involved in what we do here. Right. Uh, it's very easy to look around and realize that if we don't do something about it, in 20 years we'll be, we'll be the only ones here. Right, uh, right. You're getting the young guys involved. No, in 20 years some of us won't be here. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> 30 under 30, tell us about that. That's well, what the idea popular. was, you know, when I would come to car shows as a young person, it's a bit discouraging because you see people put literally hundreds of thousands of dollars into restoring cars, and who's got that kind of money, you know? So uh, it started with something I used to call the Rattle Can Award. I would always try to find the person who did the most amount of work for the least amount of money, you know, sanded it in their mother's garage, spray painted it outside on, yeah. you know, on a day when there's no wind, you know, all that kind of stuff. So to me, that was always, look at the bleed to that. To me, I thought it'd be fun to take that sort of attitude to a Concord. So a 30 under 30 is young people 30 years or younger that are putting no more than $30,000 into restoring their car. And when you're 24, that's a huge amount yeah. of money. So most of it is just back-breaking labor and hand sanding and hand painting. And, you know, that's really the cool thing about it. I mean, all these cars out there have a story. Most of the kids will tell you, one guy bought his Corvette when he was 14 years old, and he's been working on it ever since. And another guy had a burned-out BMW because it's the only one he could get, and he brought it back from nothing. That's, to me, the... You know, it's like the guy who runs better than the guy who walks, the guy who walks better than the guy who drives. You know, that type of attitude. Well, seeing those cars mixed in on the tour really drove it home for me, where you, that S10 pickup with the wrinkled paint in the, in the bed, yeah. um, mixed in with multi-million dollar Bugattis and Ferraris. Of the, the, the 30 under 30 cars, is there one that resonated particularly well, yeah, with you? I, I picked a winner. I don't want to say who oh, you did. Yeah, okay. but uh, yeah, to me, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, like on my website, the JLL's Garage, we do a Lamborghini or Ferrari, we'll get 600,000, 700,000 hits. We do a B210 Datsun that's got Webers and custom wheels and custom suspension, two and a half million hits. Because yeah. that's, that's what most young people relate to. That's the car they rode into school, that's the car their mom had. You know, so there's a, there's a, a certain feeling that goes yeah. with that. Well, coming up in a minute, obviously you're going to be over on the, the main stage there with Donald. As right, the, right. The, the judges are doing their job. Uh, we're going to try and check in with Donald a bit later and work out what Very the magic is of the, of, the, of the judging world. But they're cool. locked away in a little cube over there right, doing, right, doing right, what right. they do. Uh, we're going to show a little highlight video of the weekend. But, Jay, thank you so much. Oh, oh uh, Willy Wonka's here. He wants a suit back. <laughs> oh, yeah. And are you going to change before the show? Uh, uh, when we come back, I, I did just change. Oh, sorry. You can borrow mine. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, I love it. And we touched on this is not just the Concours, this is the Concours and Motor Week. And it has been a truly remarkable week. Uh, this is the fourth day of activity. Some highlights here playing. Young Oliver, 12-year-old Oliver, was a star at the, the gathering. This is the VIP entrance dinner. A ton of fun had by all. Each one of these events, I was saying this morning in our production meeting, each one of these events on its own would have been quite a happening, but to have them stacked up back to back, 
and then culminating with the gala last night. Uh, I have never been to a masquerade party such as this, but we were set up at the, the Concourse Village. I have to say, everyone seems to eat in every single shot we've seen so far. Uh, but wearing a mask last night, Tommy, I didn't see you there anyway. So, uh, But what a, what a great way to look back on an amazing weekend when you have global reveals and supermodels. It's not so bad. And, of course, Donald Osborne. You know you're in for a good time. But, of course, as it was coming here, everyone leading up to today, uh, for all the brands, seeing everybody out there, the competitors on the tour, in front of all these incredible houses, that, I think, was the highlight. That's what makes this Concours and Motor Week stand out above all else. And there's lovely Emily Stanley with Nick Shorsh. And Nick, I'm going to start bringing you in here because this is our, this is the big game day. This is the race day. This is what we've all been waiting for. Um, big round of applause, everyone, for Nick being here. Um, and we're sitting by a trophy. Now, you've prepared cars to go on the lawn before at some of the big events. Uh, so is Jay. It, it's, there's a nerves to this, isn't there? There's a lot of nerves. And the people that are here are what makes it. I mean, yeah. look at the crowd. Look at the cars. They've, they've worked really hard, and this 30 under 30 class that was Jay's brainchild has generated an incredible group of cars that are all very unique. Some of the cars were built from scratch. I mean, they were, they were yeah. I don't want to say rust buckets, but they were raw. They were closer and, to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, they were closer to undone than done. And they are really beautiful today as they sit here. And one of the fellows has been working on it for seven years. So. It's amazing. And that's what the, that's what this hobby is about, and that's what this day is about. So nerves, yes. I want to see somebody win this and take it home, and they probably could wear it around their neck, but I'm not quite sure how. <laughs> the Bugatti starter kit. If that's around <laughs> the Bugatti there. starter kit. Um, you'd have to have a whole wrap band to carry yeah. it with you. But it's a uh, it, it's a great day, and I think the most important thing for us is the weather's held out. We have the ocean in front of us, and the breakers behind us. So it does bring history, luxury, and sport which is what Newport's known for. So I, I believe it's all together. We walked around, you and I, earlier, and there was no difference going from the 30 under 30 entrance to someone with what would arguably be a, you know, a very expensive post-war car. And, but the, the passion, what they have, the, the love of their car, the, the pride in their car, it's, that is really classless, isn't it? It's, it is. And they were right next to each other, as you yeah, and I they saw. Were. And you'd walk from a, a $3 million car to a $100,000 car to a $50,000 car, and there's no difference. And there shouldn't be. Yeah. The beautiful, beautiful thing about cars is it's not about money. It's about passion. Yeah. Now, we should wind back a little bit. This started with the Audrain Museum, which yes. you brought to Newport. And Nick is the chairman of the Audrain's Automobile Museum and the driving force behind this whole motor week. But, um, when we, Justin and I were on the tour to Elegance and we saw the town come out and they were lining the road, we thought of you. We said that had to have been really gratifying for you. See young and old and it was like a big parade. And this is just year one, yes. so word of mouth. But um, just like everyone is obsessed over their cars, you've obsessed over bringing this to life. What was it like this morning when you walked out here? It was, it was surreal. It was surreal to see the people and the cars and the faces, everybody sitting with their cars, talking about it walking from from car to car and they want to tell you about what they did and why they did it and it, it's wonderful because it's what we all dream of and yesterday on the sidewalk when you couldn't see um, between the cars and the people and it was just a mass of people enjoying the sunlight in the afternoon or the morning and all the cars had just run and they all drove the cars shouldn't just sit they're not trailer queens they don't do better over time sitting in a garage. They, they do better degrade. doing what they're built to do, so they're kinetic art. So for me, my partners, uh, we built this, uh, the, the five of us built this over the last uh, five, six years, and it was the idea that we would, this is the right place to have it. And the building is an original Beaux-Arts building, and everything grew right from that, so. Well, the word is out. There's a lot of people here that have been to all of the events all over the world, and um, there's a lot of great events, but there's some people that are pretty jaded that are eyes wide open. And Jay Ward from Pixar said it best. He says, you guys didn't just kind of sneak into this. He said, you did a cannonball into the deep end of the pool. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was a perfect description of it. Uh, but we're just getting started here. Yes. This we expect to be an annual event, and we expect to be able to uh, help the town, help the, the charities that we're working with for decades to come. And we'd like to have a track record where everybody looks back and says, this has done good 
for a lot of people that need it. And whether it's the Martin Luther King Center or the, the Veterans or whether the Edward King Center or Project Autism, I mean, Autism Speaks, excuse me, um, it doesn't really matter. They're all important and, and I think that we can continue to serve them and Newport and Aquidneck Island for the next hundred years. Well, we'd like to, I mean, Tommy, I was just actually going to say, we mustn't forget that we are outside the front of the Vanderbilt Cottage, you know, the, the breakers. Uh, and this is Willie Kay. And this is right Willie Kay up on the top of the trophy the here. The Red Devil. Uh, but the, Nash, the Preservation Society, who are effectively letting us party in there outside the lawn of the, on this house, they're a big part of preserving the future here, and we haven't actually talked about them yet, but an amazing organization that is, is opening their arms in a way they've never done before. Absolutely. The Preservation Society has allowed us to, um, to use the breakers uh, as well as the, the, uh, the lawn at um, Chateau-sur-Mer. Yeah. Rough Point is another, is the Doris Duke Foundation, and they've allowed us to use that. So it's almost every museum has, starting with the Redwood Library, going next to the, uh, to the uh, Art Museum, which has allowed us to have the Porsche exhibit there. And these are all free. So the, the museums are allowing us to offer these things to the public, just to walk down the street. The trolley service drops people off. And you can just go from place to place over about a mile and a half. Or you can walk or jog or whatever kind of exercise or just meander down. Uh, the street all the way to the end of Rough Point. And we also have Belcourt Castle across the street, which looks a little like Molsheim. And yeah, that's, where the, that's where the Bugatti exhibit is. And uh, Carolyn Raffaellian has generously allowed us to use that, as well as the Cutlers have allowed us to use the Illustration Museum. So it's, it's, a, it, it's a wonderful sharing of all the museums getting together. And then last but not least, the Tennis Hall of Fame has been our partner in this. And we've converted. I hope happily for them. I said it last yeah. night. It's kind of like you lent somebody your house. They took all your furniture out, redecorated the house, and invited you back in the next morning. So the yeah. Tennis Hall of Fame is now the, the Motor Village. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, last time I played tennis on a grass court, I got told off for wearing the wrong shoes. And we're on there with five Aston Martins. So I was thinking, that's they, we've definitely converted them to a, to a new way of thinking. And a glass box. And a glass box. Corvette. Nick, we are going to thank you so much, because I know the judges are locked away right now, deliberating. Uh, I'm going to go and take a look at the 30 for 30 cars. And Tommy, we've got a little something for everyone to watch. Yeah, well, if we did our job right, there's a lot of people watching. And there's a lot more to Newport than just this event. But I think everyone uh, will have fear of missing out. So. Uh, Hopefully, they'll come to see the mansions, they'll come to see the cars, they'll come to support. But thank you for all you've done. You. And now it's time, it's getting close to finding out who the winners are. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Justin's going to go for his walk, and we're going to delve into a little bit about what happened last night. This gala party I referenced earlier inside the breakers um, was unlike anything I've ever been a part of. From the moment we arrived in the driveway, there were these wire frame dresses that looked like they were floating as Rick Shad comes and picks up the Best in Show trophy, there was a wall with hands reaching through the wall with glasses of champagne. When we got out of our cars, you walked into the, the Breakers Mansion and you can see some of the, uh, the headdresses. Donald Osborne and, and Jay spent a, a good bit of time bantering and actually debating a little bit about electric cars. And then we had a concert with Kenny Loggins. There's the uh, Pixar renderings being uh, auctioned off that Jay Ward had drawn. It was just, it was a magnificent, magnificent evening. Put an exclamation point. This event actually predated the Concours. They've been doing this as a fundraiser for the museum for five years. And speaking of the museum, we are joined by the executive director, David DiMuzio. Um, unbelievable night last night. They've wow. been doing that for five years. How do you throw a party like that? Well, it's uh, go big or go home. You know, we, we enjoy a good party. It's a great way to celebrate, uh, you know, uh, what we what we accomplished in the year, and really sort of reach out to all the all the people that have helped us for the year. Uh, it's really fun time. Uh, it really sort of caps off the the, uh, the year for us. Yeah. Well, and it's it, it's benefiting the museum. Yes. Uh, the museum is what started all this. And now you have an interesting way you got into this whole wacky. Uh, you're an architect, and you yeah. oversaw the restoration of that beautiful Audrain building. Yeah, it was, it was a very special project. Um, uh, you know, the, the partners, uh, Nick and the partners, uh, really enjoy historic architecture. Um, and, and they bought the building really, really as a summer office for the business. We quickly realized how special the, the downstairs was, and 
uh, we had we had bought a pack a 36 Packard or something at the time, and uh, we were talking about uh, the collection and how it was growing and. Wouldn't it be great to be able to show cars? And the idea evolved very quickly. The partners got behind the idea of starting a museum. I've been in the museum business for a long time, worked at the Philadelphia Museum of Art for many years. Uh, so I jumped at the chance to, uh, I mean, how often do you ever, you never get the chance to uh, start a museum from the ground up. So uh, a great challenge and a lot of fun. Well, and you're the one, uh, one of the things that I think is great to finally have automobile museums that are on par with the great art museums. And, and for me, that a lot of the first museums were just a collection and they were static and they didn't change. But now you guys change the exhibit out every, every three months. So even if you've been recently, you got to go back. You got to go back. Um, and that lends me into one thing I want to talk about, get your view on this 30 under 30 class of cars. Uh, I guess Jay was a judge. I shouldn't have asked him what his favorite was because <laughs> he had to pick it. But um, talk a little bit about how you think that fits in with the mission of the museum. And then I guess just, uh, you know, you, you've got a pretty good eye for picking winners on the field. <laughs> what, what jumped out of you in that 30 under 30 class? Uh, well, I, I really like the BMW. Um, 2002 or 5 Series? The 2002. Okay. Uh, probably because it's from my youth. Uh-huh. Uh, it's also, I think, the story uh, of how he accomplished the work, a lot of the work himself, uh, is really what we're talking about, what we're, what we're thinking about. What's important to us is, is really conne connecting the, uh, this is the orange one there, mm -hmm. uh, really connecting with with a younger group of people, uh, really important. You know, those of us with gray hair um, want to see young guys get into the get into the hobby. So, really important to us. Um, so that's that's a really good way to connect the young people with a Concord tradition, I think. Um, but you know, the museum mission is really really starting to think more about how we can contribute to the educational process. And get young 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 kids aware that uh, there are careers in automo and, and lots of things automotive, um, and even if they cho don't choose it as a, any some sort of career, that they have the opportunity to uh, enjoy the visceral qualities that we all love about old cars. Well, you've also done a great job. I, I, some of these gentlemen in the red jackets on the field, I've, uh, I was standing by uh, Wayne Carini's MG, and I was saying, I wonder what, and he's, this guy said, I can tell you exactly what that is. So some really knowledgeable folks out there. Speaking of out on the field, we have Justin Bell is wandering out there in his fancy suit that Jay liked so much. Um, what have you got? There? He's standing by the Corvair. Talk I had to, to us, fight JB. Jay off. He really did want the suit. I know that. But you're, you're right, uh, David. When you're, when you're walking around, there is something. It's like being in an art gallery and you go, oh, my goodness, look at this. And in amongst all this, you know, multi-million dollar kit, just to see a 1973 VW thing in the 30 under 30 class, you go, God, I've always wanted one of those. And then some of the front runners definitely in class. Coleman here. Hey, I know. So what do you think? You're excited, aren't you? I'm very excited. I'm really, really excited. This is super cool. It's an honor to be here. Uh, my car right now is uh, going to be judged soon, so I'm hoping I'm doing, hoping I'm doing a really good job. With Just the so you know, your hand was really sweaty. I'm yeah, not going to do that again. Nervous. Talk about nerves on the first go. <laughs> so you got all these beautiful cars. Uh, and of course, hey, mate, how are you? Everything good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. I mean, look at them all. Oh, we got everything here. And look, in the back of this one, we even got the little Honda Mini. We used to call them pit bikes, but you got the little mini bikes in the back there. Uh, everybody really grabbing hold of it. Uh, the kid, the chap told me he wanted to put two of them in here, Tommy, but he couldn't quite fit it. Not, I don't know how big the other one was. But this is the whole spirit of this. Having vehicles like this that, I mean, the engine, you can see where the money went if you want to have a look in there. Look at that. All right. Well, this is what you would that call is a the spirit of it. A lot of the work Honda done himself. Z50. And I really want to. Uh -oh. Hey, TK, what do you think of that? Uh, JB is having a hard time hearing me. So um, the Z50 there in the uh, in the bed of that S10, that was kind of what you would call a resto mod. I can't. I, that might be the first ever time that a resto mod was on the field at a concourse that I can yeah. uh, recall. Bravo. And the cool thing is, everyone that is showcasing these multi-million dollar cars, a lot of people own these when they were thirty thousand dollar cars. So which one of those cars will be worth a mint now? If obviously we had the crystal ball, we'd all be out buying them. Is it a VW thing? Is it is We're it doing uh, well. a We're two thousand? Well the, market. the VW yeah. things have definitely ticked up for sure. Well, the other side of being here is some classic British beauties as well as some classic 
Rhode Island beauties. Molly, who is Miss Rhode Island, is here. You, a big month for you because you actually have the Miss USA finals coming up in December. The Miss America will be competing live on NBC December 19th. So I'm so excited to be here with Audrain in Newport for this incredible event yeah, all beautiful. weekend long. Yeah. So what have you seen? Uh, you don't, I don't know how much you know about cars, but I always think a great way Miss to America judge them is by what stops you and you go, I just love that. What have you seen so far? I mean, everything. It's been incredible talking with the owners, learning more about the cars, getting really educated. It has been a phenomenal event. Well, good luck in December. We'll be rooting for Miss Rhode Island. Just come this way, guys, because uh, Tommy, as one of the things that happens here, you, you realize also in your history lesson as to what goes on through the automobile industry really was a reflection also of the cultural and social times. And I just love looking at these two, both 1929. Over here, you have this huge Bentley. It, it's stunning. It actually, I think I wore my suit today just to fit in with this. And it, but it's, it's a bit like Dad's Army. I don't know if you ever saw that British TV show. It was very uh, granular and the British stiff upper lip and all that. And it was obviously looking bloody tough to drive. But over here, also 1929, you have this gorgeous DuPont. Now, this is one of two that were built uh, in 1929. They actually went to Le Mans with uh, the predecessor of this car. But just look how refined it is. Look at the gorgeous Lelac crystal, I believe it is Lelac, on the front hood ornament here. Whereas the British one was just totally trying to cling on to stop the gas coming out the front. We were, we were a little bit more organic back then. Uh, walking along this way uh, in between everybody. And that's the great thing about this. I don't think at this point you're allowed to touch the cars, but you're gonna be as close as you can to some of the most beautiful cars in history. Um, I'm gonna walk over here because there's a chat with a car that I've never heard of before, uh, other than in a, in a magazine. And that's the great thing about being here. M Newport has opened its arms to showing us cars that really haven't been seen at many concours before. Working our way, of course, are some beautiful Chevrolets, a, a gorgeous Ferrari, and I'm gonna come up with Walter here. Walter, you have a Seata, a 1954 Seata that I think you've had for an awful long time, but you are the master of eclectic stuff. <laughs> he didn't use the word stuff, by the way, earlier, but, but tell us a bit about your car. We own this car. Uh, this is a 19, as you say, 54 Seata uh, Balbo body coupe. It's one of 11 built. It's one of seven still remaining. It's been in my family uh, a little over 60 years. It was bought off a used car lot in Queens. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was uh, rather severely damaged. And it's by you? Not by me. I was not even, I wasn't even close to the car when the woman hit it from behind. And since then, it has been a fresh restoration. And when they restored the car, even though the car had been painted three times in its life, the rear windows had never been out. And underneath the rear windows was this color. So this is exactly the car, color the car was painted in 1953 when they built it. And how important do you think it is when you come to a show like this uh, to bring that, that story? Because every car, for me, if we could, they do have voices, I believe. They do have a way of spreading their personal story. How much for you is not just the look of the car but the, and the provenance, but the story that comes with it, to share that story? Well, it's, it's very much the story of the car, but it's even more important that it is a car that the majority of people who come to a show for the first time have never heard of it. And that's unique. You know, I'm standing next to a Ferrari, and on the other side there's a Jaguar. There was a fellow, uh, Mike Barrett, was BMC's racing director in this country many years ago. And he tells the story of a guy who was collecting MGA twin cams and putting them away on the premise that they were going to be worth a lot of money eventually. And he said, there's a problem with that theory. If there's no new car, there's no old car. And Good way of putting it. Basically, most people only know what new cars are. They may know Ferrari because they're brand new and then appreciate the ones that were built in the 50s, right? But the number of people who know what Seattle are 
they're car people. Well, I'll tell you now, there's a few more that do. Are you nervous to see how the judges treat the, your lovely lady? <laughs> You're always a little bit nervous. <laughs> oh, well, that's the, that's the key. Tommy, I'm going to make my way back over to you. Uh, definitely a sense of anticipation here because the judges locked away in their adrenaline-fueled tent over there will soon be making their way out. Good luck today. Okay. All right, okay. take care. Seattle is well said. It is for the car people because everyone knows the Ferraris. A little bit like watches. Everybody knows the Rolex. Not everybody knows some of the subtler luxury brands. I remember the first time I saw a Seattle, Tim Considine has this New Year's Day party, and I pulled up, and I didn't know what it was. It was parked in the driveway, and it was a Seattle Roadster uh, that Tim told me he had owned one back in the day. And uh, like most of us, you have a story of the one that got away, and that was the one that got away from for Tim Considine. So, um, it's it's almost all over, but the shouting now. We're getting close to kicking off with the uh, with the national anthem sung by Donald Osborne. Uh, now you've done a good job handicapping the field. Which cars? I mean, without saying winners, just ones that resonated with you. I love I love Wayne Carini's MG, that coupe coupe, the like airliner. MG, the 212 Ferrari is very interesting to me. Uh, earlier, the Panard, with a with a race history, early race history here in Newport. Yeah, like early 1901. 1901. Yes. 01. Yeah, amazing car to to hear run and to see. Um, yeah, my youth. There's a there's a Pontiac GTO out there. This is the car I had when I was 16. So uh, that resonated with me very very much. Um, we have we have our we have our logo car on the field just yep. for show, not not to be judged. The, the 39 Alfa Romeo, it's a fantastic car. One, one of my rides locally. Yeah. But what what do you think they're doing right now in the tent there? Because we are getting close to the scheduled uh, moment yeah. when they make their, the ju the judges leave that tent. Yeah. Uh, what goes on in the minds of those judges? Because you could say that, you know this is a lovely car event. There's a concourse out here, but there's a lot of investment and time and money put into yeah. it. And these judges, Donald didn't bring any fluff judges, I call it. Not like me at Amelia yeah, Island when I just roster, go, oh, look, yeah. that's a nice color. Yeah. It has four wheels. Um, they're serious judges. Serious, all over the world. So the cream of the crop came here due to Donald's uh, yeah. influence. So very serious judging. They take it very seriously. I'm, a little, I'm actually a little taken back how serious it is. Uh, French-style judging is not as rigid as some. Uh, so it's really about the emotional connection you have with the car when you see it, and I think that's really good. Uh, it's, I, I really don't like to worry about scratches and, and dents and dings and paint and so forth. Ta elegance elegance is, is often the tiebreaker, because yeah. a lot of them have great stories. Yeah. They're all impeccably turned out, but, but the, the but one your first that, impression, how you, how you really react to the car when you walk up to it, is really important, I think, in this judging. Uh, so I went by the judging booth. They're, they're in the middle of tallying and doing uh, some serious conversations about what they're going to pick. A little bit like a papal conference. Are we going to get smoke signals out of the tent, or how will we know? I, I wonder. I think uh, you'll see Donald storming onto the platform there, and we'll get going on it very soon. So, well, um, you, you mentioned the Ferrari, the 212. We sat with the owners uh, on Thursday night. Yeah. The, I believe, the first left-hand drive Ferrari ever built. So you want to talk about significant. You look at it, it doesn't take yeah. an expert to look at that car and know it's beautiful, but it's also significant. It's yep. very significant, yeah. You mentioned the 6C. Uh, for me, that was one of my favorite cars I drove when we came here and shot the features. And while we're waiting for the judges to deliberate, I'm going to go over there because I am the VOG, which I've always wanted to be, which is voice of God in the car concours world. So I'm going to go and do that. Uh, but you're going to have a quick look at the. This is the beautiful Alfa Romeo 6C of the Audrain collection. Here we have the lightweight 6C 1939 Alfa Romeo. The 6C represented something very special for Alfa Romeo. And the one behind me represented the last of its generation. They were the lightest and the fastest of the famous Alfa Romeo six cylinders. When it was launched, it caught the eye because of its long flowing lines and its increased high performance. And of course, super leggera means lightweight in Italian. And the reason they love to work and form the aluminum to make those flowing lines is because it's so malleable and you can get those very artistic, futuristic shapes.
Alfa Romeo, though, was a huge company in era, but really its output of motor vehicles was relatively quite small. And of course, what that meant for the consumer was these beautiful, high-performance sports cars that are really quite rare. Now, as was in vogue, you chose your coach builder according to your preference. And in the case of 13 of the six Cs, that work was done by Carrozzeria Touring of Milan. It's believed that only nine are left in existence, which means this is gonna be a real gem to drive. So the little Alpha 6C from Milan really did firmly establish the Milan-based mark as pioneers in not just technology, but design all packaged in a vehicle that truly has stood the test of time. And as I sit here, something that's definitely stood the test of time is that Italian nuance uh, of style. And it's rather like their luggage. It's not just the leather, it's the catches and the clasps. And that's how I feel in here. And for me, I'm a huge fan of the vintage dashboards and these ones, a modern day designer would be hard pushed to recreate something that is quite so beautiful. The steering is very direct. Even at these slow speeds, you can feel the feedback encouraging you to push your 6C a little faster. And also in 1939, this 6C would have done 100 miles an hour. I'm not sure I want to do 100 miles an hour clinging on. My my palms are sweaty right now, but it really is a visceral, beautiful experience. Now, vintage cars, under acceleration, ah, enjoyable. At sustained speeds, actually rather efficient. But when it comes to braking, let's just say it's more than memorable. It's the one time that you truly feel its age. There's something down here that's quite fun. It has a manometro, which must mean manometer. Uh, and driving it, you know that you were not in this car alone. It was such a symbol of status and style and virility that I'm sure you had some beautiful companion. Uh, so maybe your manometer would have overread. Anytime I drive a vintage car, I have my own version of time travel, and I can just imagine what it must have felt like for the gentleman of 1939 when he took delivery of his 6C. It was really one of the top cars of the day. Now, to me, today, it actually feels quite, uh, what would you call it, quite sedate. But in reality, for era, this was the sports car. <laughs> well, standing outside the front of the breakers uh, with the uh, uh, Motor Week director, uh, Rick Shad, but also a man who has a very uh, enthusiastic manometer himself, uh, well, John O'Hurley. Interesting that you mention that because actually I am the seventh most interesting man in the world. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I, I know that on any given day there's only six people having a better day than I am. That is the way to think about it. We are actually waiting. We're, we're doing what we know in the trade. It's called filling. It's called right stretch, now. stretch, stretch. Stretching. And I, and I thought you'd be the man to stretch with. Um, the judges, when they go into the tent to look at these cars, think of the job that they have actually to, to go through, because every car out here is spectacular. It is spectacular, but you know when they get among themselves, they say, well, which cigar do we choose to smoke? And then I saw, I saw a few bodies being thrown out of the tent, so I think it got physical in there. <laughs> you don't, and Rick, of course, for yeah. you, uh, you, no tears. We're going to hold off on that yeah. just till the end of the day. Uh, everybody <laughs> gathering around, seeing everything. You, you, the team have been working so hard. It, it's all come to fruition today. Is you feeling that you've got the, the end in sight? It is here, absolutely. Uh, it wasn't too long ago we were walking out here, you know, a year and a half ago, envisioning what it would look like, and this has exceeded all of our, anything we could have ever imagined. And like you said, the team has worked amazingly hard on this, you know, from 
I mean, literally everybody to put this together is really, really exciting. I, so said, to, I said to Rick yesterday, was one of the best days that I've had in my life. And when you can, you know, can you can catalog that on probably one hand. The idea of just being able to tour one of the great cities in the world in these classic cars and then come back to the Audrain Museum, everybody stops and all of a sudden it was like a rock, it was like Woodstock happened there. And everybody walking up and down the, uh, the streets, in and out of the cars, and everybody was happy. And that was like, I, it, it's like that's such a singular moment. And that's what cars and, by the way, dogs do. I host the National Dog Show, so I know that as well. Less clean up out here. Less yeah. clean up, it, it really is. Some oil stains, but that's all right. They're forgivable. And I have to say, uh, when I was bringing the trophy over here to put it on the stand and everybody wanting to take pictures, and we brought a little girl up so she could pose with the, with the trophy, I mean, that trophy signifies this entire event and all the heart and soul that's been put into it. So when this is handed away here soon, it's going to be a very, very extreme, extremely special moment. And, and for Rick, all I us. have to say, I hope that when they hold up that trophy, they get a really good close-up on it because the design of this trophy is absolutely sync. I think it, it certainly beats a, a, an Oscar or an Emmy or a Tony because this captures the notion of movement. And the, and the, and it's just absolutely, you just, you can't look at this and get the feeling that this is a moving object, <laughs> yeah. which is just, which is what a, a car trophy should be. And that's what this event will be. It, it will continue to move forward and morph into different things over the years and get a life of its own. And we're really excited to have this here year one at the Breakers. So. Well, it's almost that time. The, the judges, as you can see, have actually walked out onto the field and they're awarding the cars in their individual classes. But the big decision that's led by Donald Osborne they'll be going through is for that Best in Show award. I'm going to put it back to Tommy right now while we are going to uh, try and coordinate with, with Donald and when everyone's coming out. But definitely a sense of excitement. And uh, I've never been that close to a Tony or an Oscar or just I'll have to take your word for it. Anyway. <laughs> Nearly the sexiest man in the world. Yeah, no, well, that's right. You know, they were weighing in on the alive part rather than the sexy. <laughs> I can relate to that, believe me. Um, but the, the, the sexiest here are, the, are the, the metal and the a few fiberglass cars and so forth. But these cars don't just show up at these events without a lot of behind the scenes wrangling. So I, I wanted to talk to David a little bit about how does that work with the Concours? You've had people outreaching, trying to get you to bring your cars to various events. How does that outreach work? And for a first time event, how hard is it to get the class, the, the field assembled that you want? It's a bit of a challenge, certainly for a first time event. Although the, we, are, we know other collectors, we reach out to them, uh, suggest cars they may want to bring. We also, there's an application process, so we do get applic applicants that we don't even know that uh, tell us about their car, and if they look good, they're accepted. Now, how much, have you been in charge of the, the entrant and the restoration for any of your Pebble things? How, what, what's that like? What, uh, the actual process between the, there's the restoration, but there's also the detail, and then there's yeah. the post-tour detail. Uh, it's like going to the spa for a little fluff. Um, what, walk us through that. Yeah, uh, most of the cars that we've acquired are in pretty good condition, but they're not necessarily concourse quality. Um, concourse quality is like new and sometimes better than new condition, uh, unless it's a preservation class car. Um, we have one here, uh, a 300 SL 55, I believe, uh, all original, a little shabby looking, but never been restored uh, here on the field. That's kind of cool as well. but. In the restoration process, um, a lot of the cars that we've taken to Concours have slightly old, older restorations, so they need they need a good fluff. Um, in some cases, we've taken them back to the restorers that actually worked on them. Sometimes we do it ourselves. We have a restoration facility in Virginia that we, we do a lot of our own work. Uh, so you, you go through the, gar, the car and actually grade it like a judge would. Okay. And, and, and really address all the very small things that uh, aren't right about the car, whether it's just from age or patina that's too, too patina. So we move through it that way. I hear some applause uh, re rolling in from the far end of the field. So some ribbons being placed, winners being- Second, um, second and third places. Uh, are second being... and third being selected. So um, 
I, so I, I suppose we're just minutes away, but uh, we'll take this opportunity to take a closer look at a, a remarkable, almost unprecedented collection of cars that you have at the uh, drain right now, the GM collection. So this is called Styling the Future, and there's 12, Is uh, I know that most of them for the GM, I know the Lingenfelters uh, Lingenfelter brought two, brought two cars. GM. Why is this so significant and so impactful? Well, the Heritage Center at GM uh, has, 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 a, has a very large collection of both production and concept cars of the 100 or so concept cars they own. They do show them occasionally at small events. This is the first time they've ever lent uh, a large number to in a mass. museum in mass. So uh, a, a really great collaboration between the Audre and the GM design. Uh, Michael Simcoe uh, really got behind this along with uh, Donald Osborne co-curating the show with me. Uh, it, it, it's, it's amazing. These are cars that I remember from my, from my youth, seeing them in magazines and on television. Uh, to see them in real life is amazing. The first concept car, the Y Job, the Le Sabre, uh, the Test Mule, the first Corvette to have a V8 engine in it uh, uh, from the Lingenfelter collection. And these are things, uh, you know, a 31 V16 Cadillac with, with, that, that uh, was from a, a Providence, Rhode Island family. Uh, some amazing cars, uh, never to be seen again on the East Coast, likely, in, in, at least in the next decade let's say so they're here for another month through mid-november yeah um, as we see here the awards being handed out we're going to take a quick break and we're going to go to a car that is in the theme of the 30 under 30. a few weeks ago i was able to drive the uh the 2002 turbo 1974 Turbo, uh, you mentioned the 2002 being yes. close to your heart. This is uh, as good as it gets in terms of turbocharged, an extra 30% of horsepower. We got a chance to drive it along the beaches here in Newport. The BMW 2002 is a style icon in its own right. Elegant three box profile, bathtub shape, forward canted nose, stubby wheelbase, chrome bumpers, and best of all, this one is turbocharged. In the 1970s, muscle cars were all the rage with the youth. And this was BMW's answer, a small, compact, turbocharged 2002, demonstrating that performance means more than just going fast in a straight line and moving BMW into the spotlight with younger drivers. Now, as a car culture, it's also important for us to appeal to the younger audience, which is why this year the Audrain's Concourse has a special new category called 30 Under 30 eligible only to people under 30 years of age with cars costing less than $30,000. Now, having said that, we've taken a little creative license because in case you haven't noticed, I'm not under 30 anymore and you probably can't get this particular 2002 for under 30,000, but it's a cultural icon that appeals to a younger audience and you can still find a really nice 2002 for under 30 grand. does make you want to rip through the back roads. That also takes me back to when I was a kid and hoping that the neighbors didn't phone home and tell my dad. I think the appeal of this car is you take kind of a normal car, a 2002, which was sort of a compact economy car, if you will, and then blowing it out like BMW did when they made it the Turbo 2002. It went from 130 to 170 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot, but on a 2,400 pound car, it was definitely a big deal. Forget how small cars were in this era. I can reach my hand across and touch the passenger door, and it's just uh, nothing more than what you needed. Today, to appeal to the young generation, you know, you've got the Subaru STIs, you've got the R32 Volkswagen, you've got uh, the Mitsubishi Evos or, or the you know the Nissan GTR, all cars that are really targeted for the tuner enthusiast kid. This is the first kind of small, you know, everyday, every man's car that was hot rodded that I can remember in the small category. I'm trying to sum up the appeal of this car, I think there's some things that never changed. The idea of a little car with more horsepower than it should 
just appeals to the youth. You know, it's a little bit of a rebel spirit. It's like a sort of a normal car that's been pumped up on steroids. Really just kind of capture the spirit of the young enthusiast from that time. And kids don't change. They like stuff that their parents don't like. So the fact that the graphics offended the German press, the kids at the time would have loved that. More power than it should have, loved that. And it looked aftermarket, you know, riveted on flares, 13 inch Alpina mag wheels. Got this red, it's around on the pedometer and the tachometer. Really tongue in cheek, reversed out letters saying Turbo 2002 on the front air dam to alert the people that you're ripping up on so they can read it in their mirror. As I look over the shoulder, see someone ripping out there on a kite surfer, sun going down here on the beach, people enjoying the Rhode Island summer. I'm reminded that, you know, not all, everything in life that's great costs a million bucks, this car included. This car isn't exactly cheap. They're going up because this is about as nice a one as you're going to find. But it reminds me there is still such a thing as attainable, affordable luxury. When I was a kid, I could imagine owning this car someday and probably today is still good. 22-year-old TK would be in heaven. 50-year-old TK is enjoying himself too. I'll tell you what, it's something, even though I'm 52 years old, had a, uh, quite the racing career and drove a lot of remarkable cars, some part of me is still the 13-year-old or 14-year-old kid flipping through Road and Track magazine and memorizing the, the performance stats in the front. And so uh, to get to drive that car, um, I just, it, it takes me back. And it's the one thing, I, we've talked about it a couple times throughout the, the, the various days, the automobile is something that intersects almost every single person's life. Not all of them are, are fantastic cars like this with significance and elegance and beauty. Sometimes it's your buddy's hand-me-down car that was your first set of wheels to get around your, your local hometown. And so um, I, I just think it's so fan. And every single one of these cars and owners, like we saw with the gentleman with the Seata, been in his family for 60 years. And uh, we could go on for literally 24 hours and, and just do nothing but stories. But so uh, back with David. Um, speaking of stories, the earliest races in America were held, the first races were held here in Newport, Rhode Island with Willie K. Vanderbilt. One of the cars in the museum it fits, is a big part of that history. Talk to us about old number 16. It's a 1906 locomobile made in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, it, it was in the race in, in, in DNF in 06. Okay. Uh, it was the fastest, did the fastest lap, had tire problems, and the ra racer and co-pilot had to change their own tires. There's no pit crew, so uh, DNF in, in, in 1906. No race in 07. In 1908, they come back with some French technology, quick release on the bead so they can get the tires off quickly, and also running European tires. Uh, they won the race in 1908, the first American car to win an international race. So probably the most historically important race car in American, in early American history, automotive history. Uh, it's belong, it belongs now to the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit. And now that car, you, you talked about the, the riding mechanic. It, yeah. it did the tire changes, but I noticed there's also a pump. It looks like a bicycle yeah. Yeah, tire it's... pump in the passenger seat. Yeah. What was that riding mechanic doing? Well, he's pressurizing the gas tank. Uh, he can adjust a spark advance and retard and uh, do some other tuning in the car. So it literally takes two guys to drive the car. Maybe even some oiling of, of certain things yeah, as well? so there was oiling of chain, chain, dual drive, dual, dual chain drive uh, in the rear. Um, so not like a car today, lots of things to do while you're driving it. Not to mention dangerous as hell. So they probably Crazy. didn't realize exactly how dangerous. Looking back, it's easy no to see. No I think they, they thought that getting uh, shot out of the car if it rolled was a better thing than, than being, you know, have a seatbelt and being contained in the car. 
pretty crazy. You're talking about a car with over 80 horsepower that go 100 miles an hour. We have a picture in the gallery of the car airborne going over a bridge. That picture is is and, staggering. Yeah, another picture of the co-pilot screaming, you know, because you can't hear, obviously, uh, at the pilot, you know, at the driver saying, you know, what, what what we have to do, what's next, you know. That's that's kind of captured in the trophy, yeah. even though it's not the exact yeah, same that car. Yeah, really, really part of the inspiration for the trophy. Well, uh, we mentioned uh, Ken Lingenfelter, uh, who's donated two of the, the co GM concept cars to the museum. I believe Justin has caught up with Mr. Lingenfelter on the field. Well, yeah, not just uh, Mr. Ken, but also Mark and Brooke. Uh, we see you guys at all the biggest car events around the world. Um, Ken, obviously, you jumped in early here and became a sponsor of the event. You've been walking around all weekend. What's your feeling? Because you, it's hard. You don't want to compare anything to anyone else because everything has to stand on its own right. But really, they've they've made a big impact this weekend. You know, this is a first year event, and it's it blow you away. I mean, these guys have really figured this out. So I'm I'm planning on putting it on my regular schedule, annually. We like that. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you weren't even supposed to be coming, but I know Brookie was here from the beginning of the weekend. What was the phone call she gave? Like, Dad, you really should come and check it out. Well, actually, <clears throat> pardon me, I had a meeting with Nick about eight months ago, and he said, you got to get involved. And I said, you know, Nick, I'd love to, but there's so many events on my schedule, I just don't know if I can. And I wasn't planning on coming because Hershey's is coming week. So I'm swamped. So my daughter says, I'm going anyway. And then all my friends are here, and they start calling me, and I see what's going on. So I jumped on a plane last night. I got here late last night. And I'm thank, thank goodness I'm here because it's phenomenal. Yeah. And I just of course, miss it. you couldn't miss it. And of course, Britt, you, Britt, you really do represent the next generation. She also is the creator of her own line of uh, jewelry, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, but, Britt, you, you, we talked about it at Pebble Beach last year. One of the biggest issues is getting the young people involved. And I talked to you like I was a young guy, but I, I really am old. And, I, and you have a lot of young friends. The 30 under 30 class, are you glad that's here? Does it make you think, yeah, people like me can get involved? I think it's awesome. I think it's in extremely important to attend, um, meet other young generations that are really involved, um, excited for the future. And I, I love this event. I think it's going to be an awesome event to come to. Well, we are hoping so. now. You definitely have both been experienced in entering cars into concourse. There is a sense of excitement. Tommy and I said it at the beginning, we related it to race day. You know, there's a nervousness in the tummy. You wonder what's going on. You wonder how the judges are going to view, actually, your pride and joy. What is it like for the judges, though? Because it's quite an important decision. You know, I, I can uh, speak as a judge for other events, but, you know, the fact is you want to do the best you can. You want to be as fair as possible. and. Uh, there's some amazing cars out here. It's so very difficult to think about picking, you know, one or two or three. Well, 41 guys all in a tent have made most of their decisions, but in the end, it comes down to refining the distillation of all those results to tabulate the best in show. We have an amazing awards ceremony about to come up. Jay Leno himself with Donald Osborne, chairman of the Concord Elegance, will be up on the stage behind me. And there will be some very lucky winners amongst all these beautiful cars. So Tommy, I think uh, I'm gonna throw it back to you because I'm gonna go and track Donald down. He's the man with the uh, key to the castle here. Thank you, Justin. Um... It, it was nice to hear from those two gentlemen who have been to a lot of great events, put this one in perspective, and to hear that Mark flew in last night, I knew there was going to be some FOMO going on. I talked to Bruce Meyer a couple weeks ago. The Peterson Gala was last night, and he was already committed to that, but I keep, I'm getting the sense, as the word was getting out, what this event was going to be like, I knew there were some people that weren't planning on coming and they were wishing they were going to be here. Rob Kaufman, who sent that, that uh, the Panard, the 1901 Panard, I saw him down at VR last week. I could tell from him that he was thinking maybe he should change his plans to get here. So uh, it's cool to see that unfold. Um, but now it's it's the moment we've all been waiting for to find out the winners, the people that uh, on race day, uh, there's only one winner. Uh, I don't think there's, there's no losers here. You look around this field and you see these beautiful cars, but uh, shows have trophies and you, you've got to hand them out. It sounds like the decisions have been made and it's getting close. Now, let's hear the voice of God, Justin Bell. Everybody gathered around in front of the breakers. If you make your way up 
just in front of the beautiful house. Yes, I'm talking to you all over there. Come up because this is a very special moment. And now for the chairman of the first inaugural Audrain Newport Concorde Elegance, Mr. Donald Osborne. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming here today and celebrating this amazing initial event. I'm here with my friend and uh, co-chairman, Mr. Jay Leno. And clothes designer. And clothes designer, exactly. And uh, we're just about to get our award ceremony started, as Justin just mentioned. But before we do, I'd like to start with the singing of the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Yeah, nice job. Very nice job, Donald. Thank you. Thank you very much, very Jay. Very nice job. And uh, so, we've both been to a lot of car shows around the country and around the world. How do you think this has come out, Jay? Oh, it's fantastic. It's really nice. It's just the right number of cars today. You know, it's 100. The cars are well-spaced. People can walk among the cars, and it's not all crammed together, and you can talk to the owners, and everybody's very congenial, very friendly. Uh, and now we have some awards to give out. So. We do indeed. And uh, one of the things which is very important uh, as I mentioned before, about what the judges here, and I'd like to call all the judges up in front of the platform here, please. Will all the judges come here? We have an amazing international team of judges from the US, the UK, Germany, Italy. And these ladies and gentlemen have done a superb and amazing job in recognizing the best of the best among all the cars out in the field. And please do give them a very, very, very strong round of applause because it's a, yeah. an unenviable job that, that these men and women have and have done today. They have come here from everywhere you can imagine with incredible experience in Concours around the world and throughout the automotive world and read their bios in the program and you will be incredibly impressed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And if you did not win, we will give you the home address of the judge <laughs> for your car. And you can take it up with them personally. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Oh, we've got some latecomers, some stragglers. Just wave at the crowd. Thank you very much. Now, I will have to ask, we, we all have cars coming across here very shortly, so please watch out for the folks in the red jackets. They will indicate where you can and cannot stand. And it's a very exciting thing. We have 13 classes here today, and one of them is a very exciting class. That was your idea, Jay, the 30 under 30 class. Right, right. Uh, this is a class we thought would be fun because we all know how much it costs to restore a car, and by the time most, not too many young people can restore a car, let's face it. So you've got to, you get to be an old guy like me before you can restore something. So I used to come to car shows and get a bit depressed about that. So I thought, let's start a category, age 30 and under, 
and you can spend no more than $30,000 restoring your car. Now, when you're 25 years old, that's a huge amount of money. But a lot of these cars were restored for a lot less than that. These are young men and women that did the car in their parents' garage or in their grandmother's house or even in the backyard. And uh, if the paint doesn't look as good as perhaps some of the uh, concourse winning cars you've seen in the past, it's only because they did it with spray cans and they rubbed it down themselves. And uh, that looks pretty good to me. So these are really sort of hard work and dedication over having a professional restore the car themselves. These are young men and women that did, most of them did the whole car themselves, and I think that's pretty cool. Some of them were even father and son projects, but that's sort of the fun part, and I think that's what keeps our hobby going. It's about the direct connection that we feel with the cars that we right, have. Right, right. And uh, some of the greatest collectors in the world have started out by doing their own restorations, getting involved, really bonding with the cars, and that's what we really see in that class right. in a big way. Bonding with no bondo. That's it. <laughs> exactly. That's Bonding, it. Bonding without bondo, without bondo, is, bondo. is the yes. key yes. Uh, point here. Yes. yes. And uh, what you will see this afternoon as well is something quite interesting. We keep talking about the themes of uh, history, luxury, and sport. And I think it's worth uh, pointing out, I hope you've had a chance to see during the day the amazing Best of Show trophy, which we'll award this afternoon in a few minutes. And that is a trophy that was designed by the executive director of the Audrain, uh, Concours, and Motor Week, uh, Rick Shad, and it's an uh, astonishing uh, rendition of the Vanderbilt Cup racer uh, on the road in sterling silver and just executed in an amazing way. Oh, yeah, and if you drop this on your foot, you will never walk again. Exactly, it is something that uh, is uh, not to be considered lightly, pun intended. Exactly, I think we're having our first car appearing shortly. Um, we're doing this in class order, and of course the first class is the oldest of the classes. So, um, Antonio? To help present our awards, we have Antonio Meligari and Molly Andrade, who is Miss Rhode Island. And uh, I believe that you were wondering if I Antonio... I am Mr. Rhode Island. How do you do? <laughs> nice to see you all. Thank you very much. And it was Thank done you. through a write in vote because it's actually sort of Mr. Massachusetts, uh, yeah, yeah. California slash Rhode Island. Uh, Mr. Fashion Icon. Exactly. Well, let, well, let's bring them up. Let's get the trophy. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. We have to wait I for hear a, a car, car starting out. I hear out. a car. I see it's a car. Okay, coming. but we haven't said what car it is. No, it's going to be quite the mystery. I think it looks as if it's a Rolls Royce. Yeah, it's very, oh, very, nice, very nice car. Here it comes right now. Hey, mister, your muffler. Hey, get a muffler on that thing, will you? What a beautiful and car that is. Here we have the first of our awards is Class 1, Historic Newport. These are cars either with a Newport connection or a car that would be perfectly at home here among the great mansions in Newport. And presenting the award for first in class, this 1923 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost owned by Rick Brown. Congratulations, beautiful Congratulations, car. And, and cute kids in the back. Hi, yeah, guys. Look, look, at those, look at those rich heiresses and there Aaron go, heiresses yeah, in the back yeah. there. That's absolutely fantastic. Nice. Cool. This car was delivered to a Vanderbilt here in Newport. No mistaking a Packard. Beautiful car. This is class five. And the first place award goes to 1911 Packard 30, owned by Mr. DeAngelis. This is absolutely, and what's wonderful is the fact that this car came new with that cap that says 1911 yeah. Packard Model 30, which is absolutely terrific. And that is our first class winner in class two. Most amazing, he bought it new. Look how young he looks, fantastic. <laughs> the third owner. Third owner, okay. Absolutely there amazing. You go. How long have you owned the car? And you'll keep it for another 30 years, we hope. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you Beautiful very much. Car.
This is a really amazing car. This is the winner, first class in class three. A Beautiful 1927 car. Isotta Fraschini 8A. Very, Very many nice. people who are not necessarily car people know about Isotta Fraschini it's from the movie Sunset Boulevard. Oh, right, right. Norma Desmond yeah, had an Isotta Fraschini. Yeah. And this particular car is absolutely marvelous because it was ordered new by Rudolf Valentino. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, cool. he passed away before the car was completed, so he never got to drive it, but you can certainly imagine that right. great film icon and I think it was later bought by Chef Boyardee, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes, yes. Chef Boyardee actually rode in the rumble seat. I think just make up history. But it's a beautiful car. Six cylinder, gentlemen? No, eight. eight. Oh, there is it. Of course, yes. eight cylinder. And look at that uh, hood ornament on the front. There you go. Guaranteed to scare away muggers or anybody else. Look at that thing. Absolutely. It's an absolutely Fantastic. astonishing Congratulations, car. gentlemen. Thank you very much. Beautiful car. Beautiful car. Oh, oh, I always love these. these yes, are... indeed. This is class four for luxury cars in the 1950s. And this is one of my favorite cars on the planet. 1956 Mercedes-Benz 300 SC. Very owned nice. by Vin DeBona. Who was one of my teachers when I was in college. He taught you everything he, you know. In yeah, fact, right. he told no. me so. Yeah. Beautiful car. Absolutely amazing 1956? car. 1956? 1956. Yeah. yeah. And this is the uh, injected model, fuel injected model. Right. This like has the same SLs. engine as the legendary Gullwing car. This is uh, this is one of the classic engines, one of the most uh, modern engines. First car to have fuel injection, of course. Exactly. This is absolutely astonishing. And again, given our theme here of the connections with the car, you can just imagine this car in Newport effortlessly. I could. I could. Thank yeah. you very much. Congratulations, for you guys. Very and congratulations. Nice. Thank you very much. Look how comfortable those seats are. Oh, big, I know. Big comfortable you can drive seats. across the country in a car like that. Oh, beautiful. This is a very, very unusual car. This is class five sporting cars, 1920 to 1935, and this is a 1931 Ballot. This is an absolutely amazing car, great sports car, very rare. They're very, yeah. very successful. Not as well that. known as Bugatti, but certainly engineered just as well, and certainly as exotic, in fact, even more exotic as Bugatti, because you have to be a real enthusiast to know these. Bugatti built a lot more cars than they did. These were built in Paris, of course, and they're just a fantastic, fantastic automobile. And uh, they built great uh, Grand Prix racers. Right. And to see this very, very elegant and uh, sporting car is absolutely magnificent. This is so special. And thank you very much for sharing it with us, and congratulations on your first in class. Well yeah. deserved. This is one of the great secrets of the 1950s. This was, I think, even better than the equivalent Ferrari of the period. Tell them what it is, Donald. This is a Lancia Aurelia B24 Convertibile. Um, this is an absolutely amazing car, and Jay owns one. So ask the man who owns one. Well, it's a fantastic car, a very complex car. This is a real engineer's car. This is a car that engineers bought. The gearbox is a transact. It's like a watch. It's the most complicated gearbox you've ever seen. Beautifully put together. Even where the hood opens, things go. There's no stick to hold it up. It kind of goes, you know, kind of does all these sort of gyrations to hold it open. It's just a fantastic car. Absolutely astonishing. Think about the specification for 1950 when the Aurelia was first introduced. A narrow angle V6, rear transaxle, inboard rear brakes. Yeah. I mean, this is this the is most the world's car. first Vic, uh, V6 engine designed by Victorio Yano. Exactly. Uh, just a fantastic car. Wonderful, wonderful. And on car. top of it all, beautiful. Yeah. Very. Thank nice. you very much. Congratulations. And a beautiful color. I've never seen that color in one of these. Before, Absolutely beautiful so. color. That's pretty yeah. amazing. There you go. There you are. And our next is the winner of class eight. And this is the 1964 Ferrari 250 GT Lusso. Lusso is Italian for luxury. And this car is absolutely every bit of that. One of the most beautiful cars ever designed by Pininfarina and built by Ferrari. 
And in fact, it is a double winner. In addition to winning its class award, And it looks as if we have an Italian count or prince driving the car. A very distinguished looking gentleman. Look at that. Il, il Conte Utaschi. Yeah. See, he's driving the car. Uh, Jim Utaschi's beautiful cars. And it wins also the Excellence in Design Award presented by Michael Simcoe, Vice President of Global Design of General Motors. If you like the look of the new C8 Corvette, this is the man right here, the thank. He did a wonderful job. We are honored and privileged to have uh, And he's got an eye Michael for design. Here. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Michael. Thank you very much, Thank Michael. You. Wonderful. Have, have fun. fun. Pick, Pick up an Italian, Italian woman on the way out. Feel free. Mr. Utaski, he didn't mean that. OK, here comes the exact opposite. Just. American brute force right here, big 442. Four, four, there you go. Absolutely. There you go. There you are. This is the winner of Class okay. 9 Sporting Cars of the 1960s, an Oldsmobile 442. Now, yeah. tell us what 442 stands for, James. It's a four speed transmission, four on the floor, dual exhaust. Bravo. Well done. And that's Bob, Ted, Carol, and Alex from the movie. You might remember them back <laughs> in the they day. All, They've the gotten a little bit older, together. but they're still swinging. So, they are, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just yeah. loved watching this car on the tour yesterday. Um, I said to a number of people, as we worked to put this Concorde together, all these cars were lines in a spreadsheet. And yeah. then when they all appeared yesterday morning and they were there in life, and to see this wonderful red 442, I said, ah, this is going to be a great show. And so yeah, I was it's very, all, very it's happy. It's also the only car I've ever seen burned rubber with four people in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Exactly. Well, very good. Congratulations, you guys. Beautiful, Don't leave without your cuff. Beautiful though. American car. We have here's your trophy. There you go. Go to 7 Eleven, that'll hold a big gulp. <laughs> Can't get more American than that. And now for something slightly different and very unusual Class 6, Sporting Cars 1949 through 1955. The winner is Walter Eisenstark's 1953 Seata 200CS. This is a really amazing Italian sports car powered by a two-liter Fiat V8 engine, the Otto yeah. V engine. Yeah. Amazingly successful cars. Walter wants to tell me something. Amazingly it's successful cars. It's the only Italian car from this period I remember seeing with side pipes. Yes. Yeah, from the factory. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. astonishing. You have to hand those to Walt, hand that cup to Walter through Beautiful the Beautiful uh, car. Absolutely amazing car, and it's one of those cars that when you're a little kid, you drew a race car. If you've never seen this before, you draw this as a race car. Right, you know? right, right. Absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Walter. Hey, I'm showing off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't have to show it off. It shows off the beautiful job, guys. This is a very, very special car indeed. All the cars on the field are special. This is more special than most. The winner of Class 10, a 1951 Nash Healy Le Mans prototype. Right. This car ran at the 24-hour of Le Mans race and did quite well. What, uh, what, did, what did it end up doing in the race? Came in third, third overall. Third overall. overall. Came in sixth overall uh, wow. Ran it twice. This absolutely. And it, it's, it's still racing today. Good job, gentlemen. Congratulations. Here, let's get you your, uh, your winner's cup here. It has a functional beauty, wouldn't you say, Jay? It does. It's Much like nice. yourself. A Much like beauty. myself, that yes. Functional beauty. That's and what we love it, about you, And it kind of matches my jean shirt. It yeah. does. Oh, my gosh. We need to get a green car yeah, up yeah, here yeah. to uh, compliment my uh, How long attire. have you owned the car? Had the car since 1983. Congratulations. That's great. So as you can see, a lot of work, and the cars like this are always a work in progress, and it's just beautiful. Just love the the, the drilled... Uh, the drilled drums are absolutely amazing. Drums. Yeah, very nice. Make sure you can stop in the, uh, in the best in class circle. Congratulations, you guys. Keep Thank racing. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Keep racing. Okay, now we have a... Our first driver without gray hair, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, this is the winner of the 30 under, under 30. 30 class. This is one of these young people. This guy 
Coming in last night, he ripped the front bumper off, coming off the truck, and ripped the whole thing off. Run around to you found what a auto. You found a guy that would paint it for you this morning, and he stuck stuck it back. See, that's what I love. I think that's what I great. I love the absence of chrome. I love how it's still a 2002, but just been sort of updated and millennialized a little bit. Exactly, you know? 1976, yeah. 2002, and it pays such great tribute to, to the 2002 because yeah. one of the iconic colors is is Inca orange. Right, right, right. And it's right. just so absolutely amazingly uh, great. And it shows the fact that these cars can be personalized in the style and spirit of their builders. And that's what really makes it so special and a personal connection with the car. That's and what you we first want to got celebrate. this car in college, correct? You got this car when you were 16. Okay, very good. Okay. So it was legal at the time. It was the legal at was the 16. time, exactly. <laughs> so it was legal at the time, so obviously no charges will be brought against him. Well, congratulations, you guys. Congratulations. Thanks Thank for being for the first winner of our 30 under 30. Making history cool. here okay. in Newport. All right, let's get back to the old farts. Here we go. Come on. Ah, Bugatti. Beautiful Bugatti. Look at this car. There we go. Oh, lovely, lovely car. Fantastic. It looks like it's moving even when it's standing still, doesn't it? Just a beautiful car. This is the winner of class. Type 57, correct? Yeah. Type 57. Supercharged or unsupercharged? Unsupercharged. Unsupercharged, but quite unusual. It does not have one of the factory bodies. It's a Deterran bodied car. Yeah. Owned by Martin Gruss. This is an absolutely beautiful example. All the Type 57s we've had here today have all been absolutely exquisite. In their, in their own way. And I love the sideways seat in the back. See, see how that works there? Kind of cool. Beautiful woodwork interior. Just a lovely, lovely automobile. Certainly deserves to be a winner in its class. Congratulations. I did not envy at all the judges who had to judge the uh, yeah, this is tough classes one. at tough, all. Tough class, tough class. Thank you very much. See Congratulations. Probably the most famous race car of all time. Certainly the, the one car that's won more races than just about any in history. Isn't that correct? Is this Absolutely. A, is this it, it had an uninterrupted race, a uh, run of race wins that has never been equaled before. It type 37? Yeah, Type 37. Owned. Prototype. Prototype. Yeah. Prototype, yeah. Prototype well, the notice the thin tires and the lightweight wheels. That's how you could tell it from the Type 35, which is, of course, the eight cylinder. This was sort of the boy racer of the day. This is the car that won more races than just about any other. Gentleman racer, please. Gentleman racer, yeah, yeah, very nice. <laughs> or a very rich boy racer, yeah. if you're going to be a rich yeah. boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. They are driving that back to LA right now. It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. So exactly. congratulate, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, congratulations. Beautiful, Beautiful car, here we go. Next, we have one of our special awards, and this is sort of a double special awards. This is the winner, or these are the winners, of the Petrolicious Best Story Award. Ah. Diane? And uh, explain to us a bit about what this award is all about. So, so if you're not familiar with Petrolicious, uh, we focus mostly on the story of a vehicle, and uh, Bruce and his son Andrew have done the Millamelia and these two cars together several times. Uh, so they're being awarded the inaugural Petrolicious Best Story Award, which includes a one-of-one -one Lamborghini Miura sculpture done by French artist Stéphane Dufour, and a founding member Petrolicious badge done by, handmade in Italy by Omea. Yeah, if you haven't seen the Petrolicious website, it's just beautiful, beautiful photography. It's not so much the technical aspect, it's more the story. You see the owner's garages, you see the roads they drive them on. They really do a wonderful job. Each, each episode is like a mini movie, so congratulations on one of the most successful websites. It's really good, really terrific. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Thank you for living the life of cars. Love these guys, thanks a lot. Don't crash into each other, though. who are shy at winning. Does anybody have jumper cables? What's going on? <laughs> well, we are at a classic car show, oh, so right, yeah. occasionally some cars may fail to proceed, but I'm sure that we'll be proceeding very, very shortly uh, with the rest of our special awards. We were doing so well. We were. 
It must have been something you said. Well, we just had two at one time, so that, you know. Oh, that, that's it, exactly. That's it. That's Imagine this space what filled is with next, one of the other cars. What is the next class? Um, well, it depends on what appears, and then we'll give that oh, award okay. to the next car that appears. If you actually were to drive around in your car, you might get an award. Yeah, they don't give them for rental cars. Ah, uh, well, it's a... Yes, this, this is an amazing thing, Jay. You have 188 cars. Yeah. How big is your garage here? It's 140,000 square feet. It's no, your garage big. here. In oh, Newport. I don't. I don't. I just you rent cars when I'm here. Exactly. He has no cars in Newport. Well, I would leave. I can't because I don't have any tools here, and it's. You know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I got a. Ah, okay. This is another one of our special awards, and this is actually an award, the chairman's choice, and I am. Oh, the chairman, and this is my choice. This is a 1952 Ferrari 212 Inter Pininfarina Cabriolet. And this car was my choice because I was looking at it and I did a little short video for the Torque Show about what we were looking at in the cars today in terms of judging. And I said, well, in the context of this event, history, luxury, sport, this car was the third Pininfarina body Ferrari. Right. The first left-hand drive uh, Pininfarina Ferrari. It debuted at the Paris show in 1952, shown at Brussels in 1952, and obviously an elegant car. Then it was taken to the Nürburgring and came in ninth overall, third in class, beating some of the works racing Ferraris. So this wow. is a car which epitomizes history, luxury, and sport. But imagine this is 19, imagine what American cars look like in 1952. <laughs> Big bulbous looking things, you know what I'm saying? And look how, I mean, you could almost make this today and it would be, it Absolutely. would still be considered would a beautiful it. car. <laughs> just, just beautiful, beautiful piece of sculpture. Stephen congratulations. Conferno, congratulations. Nice job. Thank you very nice much. Job. Ah, one of, one my, of my favorites coming up. Lamborghini Mura, many consider this to be the most beautiful sports car, certainly of the modern age ever designed. They're just wonderful. And uh, to paraphrase the Packard slogan, ask the man who owns two. Right, right. <laughs> they, no, they, uh, this is, I always consider the uh, 300 Gullwing to be the first supercar, but most people call this the first supercar because of the v12 engine mounted in the rear it's just a fantastic fantastic car just classically italian just wonderful to drive a great car to drive swiftly not a fun car to drive fast interestingly you know. enough you should mention that the award is winning the special awards wing is timeless luxury yeah. because these were not race cars they were made to be fast luxurious express drivers right, right. just wonderful so the the almost the equivalent of a a modern uh, Bugatti Type 57. Right, yeah, yeah. Fun yeah. to drive, but yeah. luxurious and... Beautiful, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Beautiful job, beautiful job. Lovely, Lovely restoration. Not overdone, very tastefully done. Very nice. The number of awards on the table is shrinking nicely. Coming up next. You're, you've got very good luck at that, actually, uh, Jay. You What's say, that? oh, and our next car coming, and then it appears. Right. So, well, uh, I didn't work this time. <laughs> Let's see. Your luck having been pushed. I hear a car. We That's hear on the something other side. coming, crowd growing ugly. Something coming, and I know. Sorry. We don't have the copyright for me to sing those songs, so I'm nervous. I can't, can't do that. Uh, you have to be very careful about that sort of thing. Yeah. Even humming. Yeah. Longer, lower, wider. Longer. <laughs> Let's see what is up next. Will the owners of the winning cars please return to your car to get your trophy? And if you don't, we'll have to award it to Jay. Should we skip one and go back or what? Well, no, it's, it's about what comes up. The field oh. crew is... Uh, See what's up next. Is ...getting us our next car. If you can turn around and tell us what it is, then Ooh, I can... I saw an albatross fly by. That's not a good <gasps> sign. No, it's not. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a good sign. They're coming in hoping that, well, if one of those owners don't pick up one of those trophies, we'll, we'll swoop right in. Yeah, only three people got the Bob, Ted, Carol, and Alex reference. <laughs> <laughs> but they enjoyed it very yeah, much. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. That's, that's what right, counts. Let's see. It's about, I see movement. All right. 
Oh, well, we're waiting. Movement. And Mr. Leonard, did you bring anything in a uh, up tempo? No. no. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh okay. Well, ah, we, we okay. had to wait. This but is... certainly a car worth waiting for. One of the all time great classics, ladies and gentlemen. Car I consider to be the first true supercar. It's got the Rudge wheels on it, got all the trick stuff. And I love this. I love the, the unrestored look. I've got one of these in about similar condition. And the fact that, you know, you can, you can take her to a car show and sit on the fender and it's not a big deal. It's, uh, what is most exciting about this car, Jay, is that this is today's People's Choice winner. Ah, oh, very good. There you go. Excellent, excellent. And when you consider the people's other choices, like The Bachelor, that's really not good. But in, in this case, they had really good taste. They know cars, they just don't know TV shows. But that's a, that's a, you know, I love the patina, gentlemen. I love, is that the original paint? One repaint. One repaint, but I love the, I love the chips. I love, I love the fact that it looks like it's, it's, it's being used. It's really a fantastic car. Really, just, and it's got all the right options, the rudge wire wheels, the whole deal. Still got all the bumpers and everything on it. Very nice, very nice, gentlemen. Congratulations, congratulations. Don't go too fast, it'll take off with those doors off. Very nice car. Okay. Is Donald vomiting on one of the trucks? What are you doing, you all right? Oh. What's our next one? Here we go, oh, here we go. More before, Bugattis, before, before, before the next car. Yeah. Before the next car, if you just hold, hold the Bugatti, Bugatti right there. Okay. Oh, hold the Bugatti right there. Hold the Bugatti right hold there. Hold the Bugatti right there, Scott. Thank uh, you very on. much. We thanked everybody for uh, voting in their People's Choice because it's very, very important. And also, every one of the People's Choice ballots also entered into a raffle ah. to win a, an engraved decanter set with the Audrain Concours Motor Week logo and two VIP tickets to next year's event. Oh. So. Shall we reach in? Let's see. Well, you, have to you have to twirl them first. You have to be well twirled. Make sure it's... Oh. Okay, let me reach in here. Donald Osborne, what are the <laughs> odds? Who knew? Oh, my God. Thank you very okay. much. I'd like to thank all the little people that made this possible. How many people do we have here named Wendy? Anybody named Wendy? Wendy? Wendy, what's your last name? What is it? Nope. No, sorry, Wendy. Wrong, Wrong Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> sorry, babes. Welcome to real life. Sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> Wendy, is this Buckle? Is that Buckles? It sounds like a stripper's name. Buckler? Wendy, Butler. Wendy Buckler. Wendy Buckler from... Uh, no, no, it looks no, like... No, it looks like Buckler. It's Buckler. Buckler. Wendy Buckler. Wendy Buckler. Wendy Buckler. Is she here? Wendy? Wendy Buckler. Wendy Buckler, come claim your tickets to This next happens year. to us also at Pebble Beach when people win cars. Wendy They're Buckler. never there. Do you know her? Where is she? She left. Do you want her to canter? Do you want her tickets for next year? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we will call her up then. We have her phone number. We will call her and tell her to expect our call. And thank you, everyone. Wait, who, I'm going to call her. You're going to call her right now? Why is she leaving? Okay. Why is this bitch leaving right now? Let me call this phone call. <laughs> hey, Wendy, get your ass back here. No, hang on a sec. Hang on. Hey, is this Wendy? Hey, Wendy, well, I'm putting you on speaker. Hi, Wendy, it's Jay Leno. You won the, you, 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 won, you, you won, our, won our drawing. Did you go home? Excuse me? Uh, but you left, right? I did leave. Have you ever ridden in a Rolls Royce? I have not. Yeah, OK, we're not going to this time either. But <laughs> we have. But you did want a lovely decanter, and you want tickets to the next year event. We have your phone number. We'll get this to you, OK? Now, you want to apologize to the crowd for leaving? Go ahead. Uh, oh, she's laughing at her. All right, Wendy, we'll call you and we'll get this. No, it's not a joke. We'll get this to you, okay? Okay. All right, sweetheart. I'm sorry I had to go. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. That was Wendy, everybody. Here. here okay.
See, you never know when you're gonna win. And you have to be there to win. Uh, now, Scott, you may pull forward. Thank you very much. Um, this is also a very, very special award. The Sporting Choice. Remember, history, luxury, sport. This wonderful Type 57 Bugatti owned by Peter and Merle Mullen of Los Angeles. I think it's an absolutely amazing car. And what a lovely color combination. It, it look, at first glance, you think it's white, but it's not. It's like a cream yellow, isn't it? A so. cream yellow with that wonderful blue mm, yeah. and, and the, the, the delicacy of the wire wheels in this car actually yeah, really, really make a... Uh, it's, yeah, it, yeah, ah, it's two different blues. Two That's different right. blues. Oh, my gosh. It's oh, very absolutely nice. astonishing. A beautiful car that looks like it's leaping forward even when it's standing yeah, still. Yeah, this is one of those cars you can look at and see something different each time you look at it. You know what I mean? That's that's the beauty of it. It has that sort of kinetic in motion look all the time. Absolutely. And it, and it looks just as good with the top up as it does with the top down. Which is that's extremely it. rare for a 1930s yeah. car. Yes. Huh? Yes. Uh, you, you, Scott, you, sir, you look not good. so much. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We can give you a hat. You're actually the worst thing about the car, sir, but it's actually <laughs> a beautiful, but it's a, no, it's a lovely car. And if you can't meet a girl in this, you're in a lot of luck. You're out of luck, pal. I'm sorry. But again, just a, just beautiful, just beautiful. Thank Peter Forrest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, the gentleman that you just saw driving that Bugatti is a very, very, very talented man. However, he's unable to drive two cars at the very same time. Uh, so the one of the next awards will be that for the Founder's Choice. We should hold that car there. Hold the Azota there, please. Thank you. The Founder's Choice Award. And here we have, indeed, the founder of the Audrain's Concorde d'Elegance and Motor Week, Mr. Nick Schorsch. Thank you. Thank you. And the winner of the award is the 1901 Panard Levasseur, owned by Rob Kaufman of Charlotte, North Carolina. And the reason why we picked this car, it has a small connection with something Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt Cup. This is one of... This is one of the finest cars of this period, 1902, I think it ran, yes. in the, the first Vanderbilt or the second Vanderbilt Cup, and it finished, which is really important. Because in those days, finishing was right. more importantly fin than winning. Finishing was winning. Yes. Yeah. And Just like it is for guys today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure if Scott is going to be able to get back to the car He's in He's not going to finish this one, apparently. Exactly. Yeah. The Panard is coming. Panard Excellent. is coming, no, ladies and gentlemen. Not the Azotha. Hold the Azotha, please. Thank you very much. Panard's coming. Get your heart going. Well, that's not it. What's no, 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 no. We have to hold that. Let's go to the side. Oh, I see. Let's go to the side. So um, while we are waiting for the Panard, um, we can talk about why I'm the only one not wearing a hat. <laughs> OK. Just a quick. We don't need hats. Oh, no, wait. No, we do need hats. That's what I was going to say. Yes. OK. Do the old get together and make an ass of yourself. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> oh, I hear it now. I hear it now. That's 1902, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty amazing. And if fire comes out of it, don't be surprised. <laughs> or alarmed. In 1902, this property sold for 11 cents. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Oh, here it comes. You hear it. Get up over the idol. In 1902, the average American never went more than five miles an hour in his life. And to have something come down Bellevue Avenue going at 70 miles an hour was pretty frightening. In fact, back in the day, people would often get killed because they'd stand out in the road looking at the car and had no idea how fast it was coming and literally get run down. But imagine driving this down Bellevue at 70 miles an hour. Pretty amazing. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen, a real piece of history. Wow. wow. 
1902. It, it goes and stops. Huh? 1901. 1901. I'm sorry. 1901. It goes and stops. Race in 1902. Goes and stops. Absolutely astonishing car. Truly, you're in the presence of Newport history. There you go. With this Panod Levasseur. That's Newport royalty, actually. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Doesn't get any much older. And Thank let, you so look much, how Nick. controllable it is. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much, Evan. Great piece of history. Pretty, Pretty nice. amazing. Fantastic. Have a nice round of applause for that, ladies and gentlemen. And, and now, now, ladies and gentlemen, what we've all been waiting for, which is the next to last award. Which is the most elegant award. We can bring the Izotta up. And, and the, the most elegant award is presented by the most appropriate of special judges, Mrs. Sandra Button, the chairman of the Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance, a member, a member of our, our judging judge. team, and presenting this very special award once again to this incredible Isotta Freschini. What a beautiful car that is. Look at that. What year? 1926? Huh? Yeah. 1926, folks. I think 25 years after the last car we just saw. Exactly. This, this is what. This is how quickly progress is moving. This is only 25 years after that one that just pulled away, the 1901. Uh, and don't pull away. Don't pull away. Because. Tell them what we have, Donald. The inaugural winner of Best of Show in the Audrey yes. Concord d'Elegance is this amazing Isotta Freschini, owned by Joseph and Marty Cassini. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, beautiful. There's no place for it in the car. You can wear that around your neck. It's a pendant. That's the beauty of it. Congratulations, you guys. Just beautiful. Thank Just you. beautiful. Joe Very nice job. Okay. Nice job. That's great. You want to come back again? You got no place to put it in the car, right? No, no. The trophy is bigger than the car, folks, so we're going to have to give it to him later. Here we go. You, you sure you want to do that? No, no, don't. No. Just for a picture. Oh, just for the picture. They won't drive away. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get Nick up and we'll thank him. Yes. Nick? Nick Shores? Please. Hang on. Before the music, let's bring Nick back up here. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who put this whole thing together, he really worked tirelessly. This is all his effort. He's a local resident, as you know. Nick Schorsch did a nice job. Thank you, Thank you for making this first Concord such a relaxed, such a fun event, and, 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 and really terrific. And, and how much did we raise for local charities, do you think? I think all in, we brought about five and a half million dollars in, and probably about a, a half a million of that will go to charity after all expenses. Oh, that's great. Terrific, terrific. The first year? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that's really good. That's Absolutely really good. astonishing. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for coming to this event, and we are ecstatic to see you here next year, where we hope to present an even better and more satisfying event. Thank you so much. Want to get a picture? Thank you very much to everybody for being here. What an amazing week this has been, Tommy. We have seen this inaugural event climb the roller coaster of expectation and, like putting two downhill skis on, launch itself off the top uh, to huge success. Well, it was remarkable from the start, and uh, we got a sneak preview because we've been coming here for a number of months and with an insight into a lot of the plans that they were going to do. But there's, there's 
theory and there's reality. And uh, to pull it off like they did is a real tribute. A lot of people put in a lot of hours. There's a lot of relief going around. Uh, but I saw the Joseph uh, in the Asada when they announced that he was also winner of Best in Show, and I saw him put his head in his hands. Um, a lot of obsession on their part. So uh, an honor to be a part and in on the ground floor. But uh, I can't wait 363 days till next year. And that's really what this event has been about, everybody, is creating a world's first here in Newport, Rhode Island. Remember, this is a place where history has been part of the fabric. Luxury and sport is what makes this place so special. And as we look forward to next year, remember, the word is out. You can tell everyone you were here for the first time. Now, a lot of special thanks have to go out. Everybody at the Audrain team, they have done an exceptional job working around the clock for many months, especially the last four days. Also, the, National, the Preservation Society, who allowed us to use many of their vehicles, the, uh, their properties. The Doris Duke, Duke Estate, for allowing us to use Rough Point. And of course, for you, the fans, to come out here and be a part of it. A lot of worthy charities will, will benefit greatly from this, but so have we as car people. So on behalf of everybody, especially the fans that follow the talk show, we've given them a little insight into a new world. Uh, in, enjoy the cars. The afternoon is definitely not over. It's your turn to walk around and be amongst these beautiful people and their cars. We'll see you next year. I uh, definitely could say the Audrain, Newport, Concours, and Motor Week has arrived. And welcome to the inaugural Newport Concours Motor Week. Here you've got all kinds of things to do. It's a beautiful setting. It's kind of like Pebble Beach East. Nicholas Schwartz, everybody, who is the, oh, as you said, the driving force, but actually co-conspirators. It's a triple conspiracy. But it's two to one bald guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. You guys want to sit together? <laughs> I'm going to go and find uh, a really special guest, a supermodel. It is Emily Ratajkowski. Are you a driver? Would you, do you enjoy driving? Do you get to drive? I'm a little nervous to drive this particular car. I'm well, not sure if I would, I would want the insurance policy on that one. All right, guys, just, I, I need a cigarette now. What would a garden party have looked like for Doris and her mates back a hundred years ago from well, now? Well, everybody would have lung cancer and be dead because she was a car of the tobacco era. But I just had a thought of uh, how Jay's going to judge tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, if, he looks at the front of your car and you're thinking, is he admiring my, my paintwork? Or That's a character. Actually, That's no, is it a character? Yeah. How big are those eyeballs? We have brought in a couple of automotive historians. Your mother dropped you off there yesterday and you yeah. wandered around. Yeah, wandered around, started taking photos. And then next and thing you know, you were with Jay Leno unveiling yeah. a, a global reveal of an Aston Martin. Yep. <laughs> Would you take the car or the girl? The car. Oh, okay. Much, much the car. Yeah, we'll talk about that again in about another 10 years and see how you're doing. If your child is, is learning to, to drive, make, teach them, you know, manual transmission. Yeah, you, yeah. you walk out of a nightclub and decide that's the time to learn a stick. I saw you yesterday at the gathering and I, and I was chatting with you and you told me you were, you were not supposed, where were you supposed to be yesterday? A lot Tommy, of people was, really that, was that a question that. or was that a statement? Because that just took three minutes. Yeah, I blew off Sorry, a few busted, days of busted. classes. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the grim reaper of television, John O'Hurley. He is the man who killed Seinfeld. It's really, it's, it's, I don't actually, kill his dark show, yeah, please. Yeah, don't kill our show. We've just got it going. <laughs>
Chop the frame of my shoe. California food.